what it is, man. Detroit versus everybody, man. Detroit, we rep the hardest, man. We gain the hardest. You know what you know what it is, man. Detroit, CJ, I'll let your boy when we get home. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Help Blaze, at thehelpblaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code GOODFELLA1BOXING. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfella since you get 18% off. We out. Well, I got this one wrong. Somebody asked me who's going to win the Cruiserweight World Boxer Series, uh, you know, tournament. Dr. Toast, hope, can't pronounce his name, the Cuban guy, the fight doctor. <clears throat> and British, you know, they decided to go ahead and uh, move forward and take to make the fight. Through all the bull job and the pandemic and the COVID. And Breeze came out on top. So let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And what it was, what I seen, I didn't see the entire fight, but I seen the back end because I was watching the Taylor fight in that card. And a congratulations to Charlie Edwards. But what I seen was Urineer, Dr. Toast, he was trying to land in one big punch. And he was coming forward. And Breeze was boxing, <laughs> you know. He was moving, sticking and moving, and then he, and then when he start, when he chose to sat down on his shots, he was pushing his head back with the jab, coming over the top with the right hand, and from what I've seen, Marius British, British, I'm sorry if I'm butchering his name, he won that fight. Feet too good, hand speed too good, he boxed, and Dr. Toast was looking for one big shot all night. He landed it to the body, he landed him to the head, and British, was, British took his best shot and gave his best shots. You know, he took a little bit of power. He took some power off to stick and move. And he was just outboxing. And then, you know, when he felt comfortable or I guess he felt comfortable enough to be sitting there with him, you know, either his power was fading or he figured he could take his shots. Then he started sitting in front of him. Pop, 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 soup, pop, pop. And Dr. Toast was still landing some big shots. But, you know, in boxing, a lot of times these judges tend to score for the aggressor. All right, he was aggressive, aggressor, but British boxed perfectly. You know, you would have thought British was the Cuban in there. The way he was boxing and moving and sticking and moving, and you would have thought that, you know, the fight doctor was the power. He was, he, he was the, the classic European fighter. You know, he don't do none of this or he don't have great defense. He is a definitely a different type of uh, Cuban fighter. Him and Gamboa are the two Cuban fighters that I thought was a little bit different in this generation. But he thought he won the fight. It was 114, 114, I think 117, what, 111. And then the other core, a car favorite, British as well, too. But he definitely, from what I've seen, earned the fight. Hand speed too good, box too good, stick to move. And what he did is what people expected um, um, Andrew Tabidi doing. That's still my guy, who Dr. Toast knocked out in the tournament. We expected what British did tonight. We expected that from Tabidi. All right. We expected the, the boxing clinic that British put on tonight, sticking and moving. He sat there, beat him up. You know what I'm saying? And he took British. He took Dr. Toast's best shot and he gave it back to him. He gave him angles. He gave him foot movement. He gave him combination. He gave him a jab. He just he, he one of the best boxers in the world. For sure. He got the IBF. He got the ring belt. He, he one of the better boxers in the world. You got to give him his credit. Now, can he move up to, to heavyweight and do some things? And I just think he may be too small, but he got the skills. He got the skills. And I, I think uh, if my memory, if my memory serves me correctly, I thought that he had it. I thought that he actually and give me a minute. I thought that he actually that he actually beat. Um, I thought that he actually beat uh, uh, Alexander Alexander Usyk. And they fight. I, I thought that he beat him, and and I and I let me double check and make sure I got the right guy because I'm pretty sure I do. I think he fought him in the other finals in the first cruiserweight tournament. Um, yeah, he lost him in 2018. I think that was in the tournament, and uh, they fought for the WBC and the WBO title, and Usyk ended up winning. And I thought he, and Usyk won a majority decision, and I thought British beat him so. At the end of the day, I picked Dr. Toast because I thought he'd be able to uh, knock this guy out. But this dude is pretty good. I thought he beat Usyk. You know, he's a really good fighter, man. And uh, he only 6'1", 75 inch reach. So, you know, he's 35 years old. So I don't think he have any ambitions on going up to, to heavyweight. But if he do, I mean, just think he a little bit too small in the style he fight. But he got the feet, his foot speed. He got the boxing ability. 
you know, you know, he from Lock Lock TV, Lock TV. Uh, he good fighter. You know what I'm saying? He he, he beat old boy tonight. If everything I seen in the front back half of that fight was indicative of the front half of that fight, he beat him. So congratulations to Marius Breedish. Um, I think he one of the best fighters in the world. Um, if Cruiserweight wasn't so over overlooked, probably being most people pound for pound list. Cause I felt that he beat Alexander Usyk. Now let me know if you agree with me in the comment section. I thought he beat him. And I ain't no Usyk hater or nothing of that nature. I thought he beat him. But, uh, you know, Dr. Toast, credit to him for coming back and still, you know, taking the challenge. But at Cruiserweight, you don't have two other opportunities. You know, it was some good money in it for them. You know, and they both took on the challenge. That's what we need to see for another weight class. We need to see the best fighting the best, you know, against, against all odds. Because they didn't have to come back and fight each other, but they did. So let me know what you guys think. Check out the fight reaction playlist. Um, if you missed any of the other fight reactions we're going to do tonight, you can always revert back to those. Um, or, you know, tomorrow. But uh, we will be covering the Charlo fight tonight, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's around a little bit less than an hour than right now. Me, Nate Campbell, Lion Killer, Beyond, covering the Jamal Charlo and Sergey Dervinchenko fight. It's a three-fight card. And then the second half of that fight card, we'll be at this channel, Lion Killer Podcast. Also put it in the community tab if you forget, and we remind you in the live. We'll be covering the Jamal, Jamal and Rosario fight on that channel. And also, we'll be covering the UFC at a Sanye fight if you missed that as well, too. So, uh, appreciate everybody for checking in. Don't forget, we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out if you have a business question, inquiry, sponsorship, video request. Uh, we also got a Facebook group. Check that out. And shout out to Breeders. Put them beats by Dre on Dr. Toe. So, you know, maybe they do it again somewhere down the line. But uh, other than that, want to make a donation? Cash app, CJGood313. Dollar sign. That's in the description. PayPal link in the description as well. Best way to donate is share, share the video. Let me know what you guys think. One time for the one time we gone.